Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, put your hands together for James Burke. Hi, I am James Burks. Thank you for that amazing intro. I hope you're having a great summer. I know I am doing what I do most days, and that is drawing and writing stories. I'm an author. I'm also an illustrator, which makes me an author illustrator. I couldn't just be one. I had to be both. A bit of an overachiever. In case you didn't know, I've written some books. I wrote Bird and Squirrel on the Run, which is a graphic novel about a bird and a squirrel. And in this book, they're on the run from this giant orange cat. And then I was fortunate enough that that book did well enough that I wrote a second book called Bird and Squirrel on Ice, where they go to Antarctica. Bird and Squirrel on the Edge, where they save a baby bear from a bunch of hungry wolves. Bird and Squirrel on Fire, where they return home to their home in the forest and there's a giant fire. I also did Bird and Squirrel All Tangled Up, where they go looking for Bigfoot and they do eventually see this giant spider. Uh, Bird and Squirrel All or Nothing, they go to the desert and they participate in a, a cross-country race. And my most recent book, the one I just came out in March, is called Agent 9 Floodageddon. And so this is a new series that I'm working on about a super spy cat who saves the world from various villains like King Crab, which is this guy down here. I'm going to tell you guys a little secret, something you may not have known about me. But I used to be a kid just like you. And so when I was a kid, it's actually when I started drawing and I found that, hey, I'm actually, I like doing this. And I can't say that I was very good at it. I, you know, I got better as the older I got. The difference was I just didn't give up. I just kept drawing. But my dad, he saw that I loved to draw. And so he had this book, Garfield Takes the Cake. And I took it and I started copying the drawings in Garfield Takes the Cake and Garfield Loses His Feet and some other Garfield books. And I used to love everything about Garfield. And so I would draw Garfield at school. You know, and my third grade teacher, she said, James, will you please? She said, I don't even know. She's not even British. She doesn't have access. But she said, James, would you please get up in front of the class and teach everyone here how to draw Garfield? And so I was terrified because as a kid, I was actually a little bit shy. And so, but I got up in front of the class and I, I said yes to it. And I got up there and I taught them how to draw Garfield. And I also threw in a Charlie Brown because I think I said this already, I'm a, a, bit, of, a bit of an overachiever. So I always like to go slightly above and beyond what's expected of me. And so I thought it'd be fun if I sort of teach you how I sort of learn to draw, and if you guys have a Bird and Squirrel book or any other books and you like Bird and Squirrel, you want to, I would say, copy Bird and Squirrel, practice drawing those characters, you know, and eventually you're going to start creating characters of your own. So I thought it would be fun if I show you sort of how to create characters and how I created Bird and Squirrel and how I draw Bird and Squirrel using just basic shapes and and then the, the idea is, is hopefully you'll be able to take those same basic shapes and create characters of your own. And then even go even further than that, maybe if you find a character that you like or you start to think about like, you know, you start to come up with who this character is and then eventually stories will start to come to you. But all of my stories, Bird and Squirrel, Beep and Ba, which is a picture book I did once, um, Gabby and Gator, Agent 9, they've all started with me drawing a character first. And then only through drawing that character, doing a bunch of things and thinking about who is this character that I come up with stories and then eventually I make books out of them. And so, but I didn't start out to write books for kids or for anyone for that matter. I just like to draw as a kid and I thought like, Eventually, I got into animation. I worked in animation. But while I was working in animation, I wanted to start writing my own stories just so I could also draw my own stories and put something out into the world that I could be proud of that was something that I made myself. And so I want to pass that on to you. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw some characters together. I'm going to show you how to draw a bird and squirrel, maybe Agent 9, and all using these sort of basic shapes that I always use. And so what you're going to need, you're going to need some paper, and maybe a pencil 
Or if you like to draw with a pen, you're brave, you don't want to erase, then pen is a good way to go. But otherwise, get yourself some pens, paper, crayons, whatever you draw with. Could be a carrot. If you like to draw with a carrot, by all means, I'm not going to tell you that that's wrong, but um, go get yourself some paper, a pen, a pencil, and we're going to draw some stuff together. So pause the video. I'm going to wait. When you come back, we're going to make some characters together. Okay, go get that paper. Hello, welcome back. I was worried. I thought you were going to leave and I'd be waiting here for a long time and you would never come back. And how awkward would that be if I'm sitting here waiting for you to come back and you never came back? So I'm glad that you came back. I hope you got your pen, your paper, your pencil, your carrot. Because uh, we're going to draw some cool stuff together. So here we go. So we're going to start with some basic shapes. I've got some dry erase markers. I've got this cool dry erase board here that I bought just for this. And so these are the basic shapes I like to draw with. The first one is very round. It's called a circle. So we're going to make a circle like this. And it's okay. You can be super loose on this. You can be very, very rough. Make multiple lines. Make all the lines you want. Scribble, scrabble. It's all okay. There are no mistakes here. So that's a circle. That's the big shape number one. Big shape number two is going to be sort of a box or a rounded square. So let's make a box like this. So that's going to be that shape number two. So that's a rounded square. And then shape number three, key shape number three is the rectangle. And again, we just keep the edges a little rounded, although they can be like hard edge squares, if you know, like very sharp edges, if you want, it's whatever you feel you know, your style might be. So we've got a circle, a square, a rectangle. Now, there's also a fourth shape called a triangle. And it's a triangle because it has three sides. So we have a triangle. So using these four basic shapes, we can draw all kinds of characters. And also, there's not it's not really a shape, but it's more of another trick is just what we'll call a line. So using these five things, a circle, a square, a rectangle, a triangle, and a line, we're going to draw some characters. So first, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to draw Squirrel. And Squirrel has two big shapes. And I always start with the biggest shapes first. So with Squirrel, his first main shape is that rounded square. So we take it like this. So we've got a rounded square. So that Squirrel's head. Now we're going to combine this square with our with our other shape called the rectangle. And so his body is a small rectangle and it just comes down like this. And you can draw the top if you want. But we're combining shapes to make characters. So now we have a big square on top of a rectangle. So we have squirrel's head on top of his rectangle body. We're going to draw squirrel's helmet which could be either a very squashed square or a stretched out rectangle. So that becomes the next shape like that. So we have three shapes we've combined to make squirrel so far. Now we're gonna take our circle and we're gonna draw some eyeballs on squirrel. So we're gonna put one eye right there, one circle there. We're gonna take another circle, we're gonna put it right here. So we've got two circles. Now for our third thing is we're going to take that circle and we're going to squash it and shrink it. And we're going to draw his nose in here, which looks a little bit like an oval or a squash circle. It's just we've taken and made that. We're squashing things. And so, and his eyeballs are just squashed little black circles that go in here. Just like that. So now for Squirrel's mouth, it's a slightly different shape. Let's imagine a jelly bean shape, maybe which is like a shape of a jelly bean or a pento bean. You know, you can draw it like that. It can also be a circle. That's pretty much like a squash circle. It's just not squashed evenly. And so we're gonna draw a little square in here and that's gonna be squirrel's teeth. And then a half a circle right here becomes his tongue. And now we're gonna put a half of a square up here on the top of his head and that becomes the top of his helmet. And one of the things I tend to always forget, and I know he doesn't have arms and legs yet, we're going to get to that, but sometimes I forget to draw his eyebrows, and Squirrel's eyebrows are just rectangles. They're sort of bent rectangles. So we're going to put one right here, 
goes up like that and we'll and then we're going to put one over here like that because he is excited and maybe we'll get into a little bit about expressions and stuff but the great thing about when you're drawing expressions is you can look in the mirror if you have a mirror nearby or you can draw in the bathroom maybe and you look in the mirror and you make those faces so when squirrels like kind of like you know he's got he's got his eyebrows up or if he was curious he'd be like one eyebrow up and looking kind of odd so i sort of make the faces that i'm drawing and so we've got his little rectangle eyebrows next we're going to get into using our lines and so i'm going to draw a line that connects from here and it goes down and connects to the bottom of his head which is this is the strap that holds on his helmet and so now we're going to draw some more lines we can draw x's up here and these become his helmet sort of pattern like that we're going to draw his arms which are just bent lines or half of a square you know comes down like this and then we can put one on this side comes down like that and then he can have two legs. So just draw a straight line here and a straight line there like that. And if you wanna make them, we get a little advanced. We're going a little advanced here, but you can make them slightly wider at the bottom than the top. That's probably more of an advanced lesson. Um, let's draw four little lines in here, little dashes, and that becomes squirrel's fur because we don't want a naked squirrel because that would just be odd, you know? These squirrels gotta have fur. So, what are we missing? We need some hands. And hands are tricky. Hands are a lot hard, but the great thing about hands is you've got two of them right here that you can look at when you're drawing your own characters. And so with Squirrel, he has three fingers and a thumb. And so what those kind of are, they're just basically like squashed rectangles become his sort of thing. So that's his thumb, and then his other fingers are gonna come out like this, and come down like this, and come out like that. And so we end up with a hand for squirrel and we'll do the same on this side come out rectangle down rectangle out here rectangle over there rectangle another hand so now we're only missing one thing which is squirrel's tail and so the tail is a bit of a it's sort of a combination of shapes maybe but it doesn't attach to his body but it sort of draw a little dash there and then a, a line out and then we're going to come up and sort of draw sort of what could be a rectangle. I guess you could draw a rectangle here. This could be a small rectangle that's attached to a bigger rectangle. And then on the end of this could be a triangle and you would get squirrel's tail. And then of course you draw a bunch of little dashes on here because that again is his fur. And so let's look at this. And the last thing if you want to do to take your squirrels, you can go in and sort of add some darker parts. You can shade in under here to give it some depth. You can shade in the mouth if you want, which is good. You can also add some ground lines so it starts to give him an environment that he's living in or standing on. He's not just floating in the air now because we've drawn a piece of something on the ground, a shadow even. And so that's how I draw a squirrel, using a square and some rectangles and a, some lines. So bird, we're going to start with sort of a big rectangle. And it's going to start like this. And it's going to come down like this and like that. But with this other side here, normally you draw a straight line here and we'd have a big rectangle. But what we're going to do is we're going to break. This side's going to be broken slightly. It's going to almost be like if you were inside this rectangle and you kicked your foot over here and broke this line, you'd end up with it looking something like this. So it's just a rectangle with one side sort of pushed out. And that is Bird's basic shape. And Bird's a bit of an advanced character because he doesn't have the same sort of basic shapes as Squirrel, but they're sort of built off the same shapes. And so that's his body. So next we're going to draw two circles, which are going to be his eyes. So we're going to put one right here. And we're going to put one right there. And don't worry if you're drawing through your other lines, you can clean that up later or you could always put another piece of paper over this and redraw it. And so these are gonna be his goggles. And so this is where it gets a little tricky with Bird because you're gonna sort of come around these goggles and make a different outline around them. And it looks something like that. And so that becomes his goggles. And then here, let's draw a line here and a line here. And that's pretty much a rectangle shape in there and you can shade that in. 
And here's two squash circles. You're going to come his eyes. Just like that. His beak is sort of a long... It could be a rectangle with like a triangle on the end. So it could come out like this. And if we want to think of the basic shapes, it can be a rectangle first. But then you're going to come down like this at the end and put sort of a triangle on there. So that becomes the end of his beak. And of course, birds generally pretty happy. So we're going to draw a happy thing like that. Although, you know, I'm not sure this, like I said, bird is a bit complicated because, you know, I'm not sure what shape that is. But that's the bottom of his beak. There's a half circle in there. You can shade that in. That's his mouth. Next up, we've got some, his eyebrows, which are kind of like triangles in a way. So we can do this and then we can come here like that and down. So that's a little triangle. And then here and then up and then down to make a triangle. Those are his eyebrows. They magically float above his head. Here's a feather that attaches here. It's just a line up and it gets a little wider at the top and comes back down to the bottom. And then another line up wider at the top and comes back to the bottom. And that's the feather on top of his head. Uh, let's see. So now we have his wings. We're going to draw wings up, which if you want to break this down into basic shapes, we could say that it's a rectangle like this that attaches to the side of his body. And another rectangle over here, which attaches to the side of his body, or sort of a, you know, it's almost a triangle in a way, but it has an extra side. So those are his things. And then he has triangles on the end, which become his fingers, or his feathers, I guess, which are his fingers, like that. And then the same over here. Triangle, 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 triangle. And he has little stick legs. And we're going to have him be running. So let's have his, a line come up and sort of bend there like that. And then this one's going to come down like this and bend back like that. And then his tail is a triangle that floats on the back of his body. And he just has a little, almost a triangle without the last part be, becomes his feet. And again, we don't want a bird without feathers. So let's draw some little dashes in here. And let's draw some ground here. So he's running. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna draw one of my favorite characters, Agent Nine. So Agent Nine is a cat. So I'm gonna show you how I draw Agent Nine using some basic shapes. So let's get rid of Bird. All right, so Agent Nine is made with two big shapes. First one, a little bit, a little like squirrel, but not a square head, it has more of a circle head. So it's gonna be like this. So we draw a circle right there and that becomes Agent Nine's head. Agent Nine's body is a rectangle. So let's draw a little rectangle down here, just like that. So that becomes, those are Agent Nine's two big shapes. So now let's draw each of nine's ears and they're kind of rounded rectangle not rectangles, triangles. So we do that and put them there, but it's sort of a, a rectangle shape. And then we'll put one over here and it comes down like that. So we've got some ears. We're going to draw some circles for the eyes, but they're going to be slightly squashed in an angle. So we're going to put one here. It's going to be like that. It's just a, a sort of an oval. And then we'll put another one right here, oval-wise. A little squashed nose, just like squirrel. You can draw that right there. And then nine, so as an eye, so let's draw some big circles in here. And you can shade those in, and those become nine's eyes. And of course, nine has goggles that nine wears, so let's draw a... It's sort of a, an eight shape, a circle eight. So if you go in and up over the nose and around and then down and over the eye and then connect. So it becomes sort of a the number eight or an infinity sign even. And nine just, her the eyebrows for nine are, you know, slightly up like that. And you can have this one slightly down. Maybe nine's curious. We'll draw nine's mouth, which is sort of a banana shape. So let's go here, draw a banana come up and around and connect the banana there. That becomes Agent Nine's mouth. 
we're going to draw sort of a wave, an up and down pattern of a wavy or a bunch of triangles that are interconnected that becomes nine's teeth. Half of the circle in here, nine's tongue. What are we missing? Let's see, we're going to draw some arms, but let's draw inside of the ear. We're going to draw a smaller triangle inside of here. Another triangle on this side. That becomes the outside of the ear, and this is the inside. You can draw some squiggly lines in here. Squiggly lines are always fun. That becomes the inside of the ear. Nine has lots of stripes. And what would that shape be? Maybe they're sort of rounded. They're either squashed ovals or maybe rounded tri rectangles. So we'll do that here. And those become nine stripes. She's got nine has two on each side up here and then two more on that side. And you can shade them in. We forgot the strap right here, so let's draw a line there and a line here. Shade that in. And then we can put a big number nine on on, on nine's chest, because that's a nine. So we'll draw a circle here, sort of a flat circle, and then a little line underneath, and that becomes the nine. Now for the legs. Like, nine doesn't have stick legs like Bird and Squirrel. They're a bit thicker, because I wanted to, to sort of change the style just slightly. And so nine's legs are kind of, let's see, we'll have nine running because nine tends to be very actiony. So that can be sort of a rectangle out there. Then you could draw another rectangle that comes down or even a triangle, but not make a point at the end. And so that's nine's leg. And then do the same thing on this one, same sort of shape. Come back here like that. It's almost like an elbow. It's like your arm makes an elbow or your leg. Draw a line here because that's where the line suit stops. And it has two stripes on the bottom of her foot. And then nine's tail. Well, let's draw nine's arms first. Again, it's an elbow shape. You can do that. And then you can do the same thing over here. Elbow shape. And nine has a watch that they wear on their, on this side. And let's see, nine's hands, hands, you can start as a big shape of a, sort of a square here. And so that becomes nine's hand is more of a square. But then if you go in here, you can sort of define what the square is and it becomes the fingers balled up into a fist like this. So if you look at your hand, it's sort of a square, but when you draw the fingers in there, it sort of breaks that shape up. But we're still drawing the big shape first, so that's Nine's hand. And then, last but not least, we're going to draw a little wavy tail that comes out like this and back and then down and connects. And then you can draw a bunch of little stripes on the tail. And they can be a little bit longer. And feel free, like if you have the Agent 9 book, you can look in closer to find that to look at it and study a little bit closer. And of course, last but not least, again, we're gonna draw our shadow on the ground. And we're gonna, or actually one more thing. I realized that I forgot to draw the backpack that Nine wears. So let's draw some straps here. There's just a line that connects there and another line that connects here. Then on the back, we have sort of a rectangle shape that connects to there. And that becomes Nine's backpack where they store all of their gadgets and stuff on a mission and last but not least let's sign our name down here because we're going to take ownership of our work james burks 21 and that's how we draw agent nine so big shape big squash circle rectangle a bunch of sort of triangles and rounded squares some lines these characters get a bit more busy but you know, the basic shapes are there in most things you want to draw. You want to draw cars, you can use basic shapes to draw cars. You can use them to draw elephants. You can find basic shapes in everything. So look around your house and see what kind of shapes you see in the things around your house. Like, is your lamp have a circle at the top and then the base is more of a rectangle? Is your couch sort of like a long rectangle that you sort of divide up into other shapes? But everything can be broken down into various types of shapes. And if you look at it that way, it makes it easier to draw certain things and at least gives you sort of a basic way in. So I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and drawing with me. 
and I would love for you to take your drawings or to create your own characters and to tell stories of your own. And hopefully one day you'll be doing this for somebody else and and you'll have the same joy and love of drawing and writing stories that I have. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your summer. Bye.